The pioneering spirit is nothing new to agriculture, as innovation has made farming in America the most productive and technologically advanced in the world. Yet tomorrow, will present a new set of challenges that will require new ideas, inventions, and innovations. That is what Farm Next is all about. Showing you the future of farming. From autonomous robots to cutting edge digital tools to better ways to fertilize your crops and increase soil health, this program will give you a glimpse of the exciting future agriculture has in store. Stay tuned to see what's next on Farm Next. Hello everyone, and welcome to this episode of Farm Next. I'm Max Armstrong, and I'm thrilled to be a part of giving you a front row seat into what's next to the world of agriculture. Before we get to what's next, let's talk about a transformational technology that's here right now, microbes that can replace nitrogen fertilizer. Not that many years ago, the co-founders of Pivot Bio dreamed of creating a better way to provide nitrogen to crops. And like the inventors you'll hear from today, they dedicated time, effort, and capital to turn their dream into a reality. Today, Pivot Bio's products deliver nitrogen to corn, wheat, and sorghum, and have been used by farmers across the country. Pivot Bio knows just how challenging it is to transform an idea into a product and to get it into the hands of farmers. So Pivot Bio, together with Farm Progress, scoured the country and found 10 entrepreneurs with the potential to be that next big idea for the future of agriculture. Each of these companies is vying for a chance to showcase their idea at this year's Farm Progress Show in Boone, Iowa. In each episode, you'll see these cutting-edge innovations in action. You'll meet the brilliant minds behind each idea, and you'll learn more as each participant presents their ideas to leaders in investing, agribusiness, and farming. And you, our audience, can vote live during the show, whether you think each idea has what it takes to appear at the Farm Progress Show. You'll do that by going to pivotbio.com vote. There you can enter to win a VIP package to the Farm Progress Show. In today's episode, we take a look at Yardstick, a startup that has developed an efficient way to take soil carbon samples. By combining field-friendly soil sampling with user-friendly software solutions, Yardstick enables more growers to measure soil carbon accurately, instantly, and affordably. Stay tuned to learn about Yardstick, but first, here's a short video about Pivot Bio. Take a look. Farmers have always taken care of what they value. Through hard work and resilience, they cultivated bountiful land. As the country grew, great revelations led to a green revolution, one that helped feed the world. Then it happened. Fewer hands worked the land, while more lived off it. Yet farmers took on the challenge. They pivoted, improved, and fed a nation hungry for progress. As Americans dialed up, farmers dialed in. Precision on the farm led to yields once thought impossible. But when it came to nitrogen, it wasn't precise or predictable enough. Not for the farmer, the crop, nor the environment. Today, Pivot Bio provides a better way to deliver a more dependable and productive nitrogen in the field, while giving growers a new tool to take care of what matters most. Farmers deserve a nitrogen worthy of who they are and what their land can provide. And now there is one. It's time to turn to a better nitrogen. Welcome back to Farm Next, the show that gives you a front row seat into what's next in the world of agriculture. In today's episode, we take a look at Yardstick. That's a startup that has developed an efficient way to take soil carbon samples. And before we meet Chris Tolles, the CEO of Yardstick, here's a short video about the company from the field. Take a look. Today, many farmers know that their practices 
can have profound effects on our ability to decarbonize agriculture. There is overwhelming evidence that the way we farm today is not sustainable. Climate change is advanced enough that we need to reduce emissions and we need to actively remove atmospheric greenhouse gases. I'm Chris Tolles, co-founder and CEO of Yardstick PVC. We're an early stage startup that's focused on measuring soil carbon. So when farmers change their farming practices, what we do is quantify the changes in soil carbon content. The conventional way of measuring soil carbon stocks today is you take a soil sample, you send it to a lab, they use a very expensive piece of equipment, and they tell you organic carbon content of your soils. There's nothing necessarily wrong with that process, it's just very difficult and very expensive. And when something's very difficult and very expensive, you don't do much of it. If this is really going to be accessible in field at scale, it needs to be something you can throw on your back. We're really proud that we've taken very, very complex sensing around spectroscopy, depth, torque, force, GPS, and package that in something that's handheld, battery powered, can get out there in the field. Because that physical embodiment in a handheld format is so essential to our ability to deliver measurement services at low cost, the fact that we've put them together in that format within just a year of existing as a company is something we're quite proud of. As our probe is drilling down into the soil, we're recording a spectral movie. Inside our device, our computer is watching the movie and interpreting that movie to then show you the number. Hey, my soil is 3.2% organic carbon. And it's the number that you really care about at the end of the day. If you are growing way lower carbon intensity grain, it's gonna get mixed in with your neighbor's grain that may be way worse. So how is it possible for you to be rewarded for your better practices if your stuff goes in the same silo as the other person's stuff. What we're trying to do is make it easy for a farmer to defend their claims that their farming practices are having positive climate impact. One of the things that's most exciting to us about soil carbon is that even if you don't believe in climate change, you absolutely believe in soil health. As soils function poorly, they produce less. And when they produce less, you make less. That's existential for many farmers. That's the agricultural productivity of our country. That's our ability to feed ourselves and support ourselves. And I think everybody would agree that that's absolutely something worth investing in. If we're gonna have more than another 40 harvests, we have to address soil health. And soil health and soil carbon align very, very well. The big goals are to transform agriculture from a net source of emissions to a net solution to emissions. There's a future in which agriculture could be a net remover of greenhouse gases from the atmosphere. We're a long ways from that, but that's a big inspiring goal that gets us excited to keep pushing Yardstick forward. With me here now is Chris Tolles. He's the CEO of Yardstick. Chris, welcome, it's good to have you here. Thank you. Give us some of the background, your background to begin with. How did you get to this point? Yeah, a little atypical. I have no background in ag anything. Um, I actually went to art school undergrad. I have a degree in furniture making, which is, uh, maybe not the most common degree for now an ag tech entrepreneur. My superpower is science commercialization. Um, I'm often the business guy alongside a co-founding scientist or engineer. In this case, uh, mid-2020, I was thinking about my next company and was part of a uh, climate entrepreneurism group, met my now co-founder, Kevin. Uh, he had already built a relationship with a soil scientist, a woman named Dr. Christine Morgan, who did much of the underlying academic research uh, that sort of undergirds our technology. We formed the company in early 2021 to take Christine's research to market. I'm curious, you met right in the midst of the pandemic. Did you meet online or we was did. it in academia? Yeah, no, uh, uh, summer 2020 was not a great time for networking. Uh, if you were looking to get out and meet people, that was a, a rough moment. So I met Kevin through uh, a Slack community, an online community all for climate entrepreneurs called My Climate Journey or MCJ. Um, thankfully, Christine and Kevin had already formed a relationship on their own. Uh, Kevin had found the literature, the literal papers that Christine had written, and was like, this is amazing, I could turn this into a product. Um, but yeah, significantly, 2020, all of Yardstick was on the internet. I actually didn't meet Kevin in person uh, until well after the company was formed. You hadn't been on a farm. No, not much. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I have um, spent very little time on farms until Yardstick. Uh, and I think that's a central uh, tension and opportunity for Yardstick is we look at agriculture very differently because while some of our team absolutely has that background, you know, our, our founding team does not. The upside is we have atypical ways of approaching problems because we're literally coming from the outside. And I think in this case particularly, 
uh, a lot of our strength comes from the long tenure and expertise of this uh, scientist, this woman, Christine, who has spent her whole career in soil science. You can't do soil science uh, for very long without spending a lot of time on farms. And the problem you're trying to address is? What Yardstick does is it measures the organic carbon content of soils. So that farmers who are farming with practices that improve soil health and therefore remove atmospheric greenhouse gases addressing climate change get rewarded for that. Right now, if you're a farmer and you have world-class performance in terms of climate impact or atmospheric um, CO2 sequestration, there's not really a, an economic uh, way for you to be rewarded. There's, you don't get paid for that. So there's a lot of value you're creating and you're not capturing that value. What we do is we measure the soil to be able to tell Farmer Amy, Farmer Margaret, hey, you're, you're stand out, and the same way you'd be paid for a better corn product, you should be better. You should be paid for a better soil health product as well. So you could benchmark it and show your advances as you go on too. Exactly, yeah. So um, our projects are governed by third-party methodologies that are published by organizations that define, hey, here's how we're gonna reward soil health, organic carbon content in soils. Um, there's a few competing examples of that, but one thing they have in common is you do a baseline and then you come back a few years later and see, hey, if it went up, like why did it go up? And how can we attribute those gains to practices that farmers are employing, which are atypically pro-climate rather than uh, harming soil health? We uh, embody our hardware in a service uh, format. Um, right now, some farmers sample their own soils, but largely if you're sampling for the purposes of doing a fertilizer prescription, for example, you'd have an agronomist who's a partner to you. In the same way you expect an agronomist to come and take soil samples, now it's just Yardstick as a team coming to take soil samples. It is super easy to use. Uh, it's a hand drill format, which you've, you've seen in the video, mm -hmm. um, but it's designed uh, to be easy to use for the purpose of high quality data and general efficiency, not because we're you know, FedExing a probe directly to a farmer. Today though, um, while I think uh, you know, self-enrollment in many of these soil carbon markets is something that could be feasible in the medium term, there's enough complexity there that right now there are project developers that are typically responsible for getting a, a large cohort of farmers together. And they tend to be our customer rather than the farmer directly. Your enthusiasm is easy to see, Chris. Thanks for sharing it with us. Yeah, happy to. And now that we've learned how Yardstick got to where they are today, our panel will scope out where the company could be heading next when we return after these brief messages. Soil is alive. Soil can breathe. Soil is incredibly complex. Most of this complexity we can't see. If you were to stick your hand in the soil and use a microscope and look under that microscope, you would see millions of microbes. Every plant, when it's growing, it needs sun, water, and nutrients. And those nutrients come from the soil. We can either add them to the soil through fertilizer or microbes in the roots and help the plant get those nutrients. Nobody fertilizes the Amazon rainforest. That guy just grows all on its own. That rainforest is supported by diverse communities of microbes within the soil that interact with all these different plants. At Pivot, we look to biology for our inspiration, our source of innovation. And, and we've been able to build products that take us a step in a better direction. Pivot Bio is a nitrogen innovator because it's a new way for us to help farmers fertilize their crops reliably. Pivot Bio has found a new way to deliver nitrogen fertilizers to farmers at scale. And so what we've done is we found microbes that have the natural ability to convert the nitrogen that's in the atmosphere into a form that the plant can use. We are revitalizing this soil component so that these microbes can be used as a product that can help the crops get more nitrogen during the time in which they need it the most. And the nice thing about microbes is that they actually make that fertilizer using carbon that comes from photosynthesis instead of fossil fuels. Our products will spoon feed a plant its nitrogen each and every day in a way that's better for the farmer and the entire planet. All of the research that we're doing here is in service to providing a better product to farmers. We have released not one, but two products for corn. We've also released a product for wheat, and we continue to develop new products for new crops. We are the best company in the world in understanding microbes at the lab level, in a greenhouse level, even in the field. 
with several years of commercial sales, we have all of this data to really drive the next generations of our future products. Whatever product that we choose to move forward in our pipeline is the one that can provide the most nitrogen back to the crop. Pivot Bio is thinking big. We want to replace all of the synthetic nitrogen fertilizer that goes into agriculture, and we want to do it with our products. And depending on how many crops we can get to, how fast we can launch all of these new products, we can do much, much more than that. We don't want to set our sights on anything shorter than supplying all of the nitrogen that crops require. So it's a bold and ambitious goal, but I think it's just the foundation for being able to influence agriculture for the next century. Welcome back to Farm Next. We're now on to the final portion of today's program. The real nitty gritty here, it's our panel examination. Let me introduce our panelists to you. The CEO and co-founder of Pivot Bio, Karsten Temme, who is an entrepreneur and uh, an engineer. Tom Carlson, who is a founding partner of the Rural American Fund. It's a private equity firm headquartered in Chicago. And we have a farmer on the program too, Lisa Peterson, third generation farmer, former national president of the FFA from Osage, Iowa. Uh, first of all, uh, I want to visit with you a little bit, Karsten, about uh, your background that you bring to this. Uh, you have uh, founded a company. You know what it's like to, to run the course here, don't you? Well, I'm, I'm excited to be able to speak entrepreneur to entrepreneur and talk about how We've got problems we've got to solve and, and ideas that we can bring together. Hopefully that makes for a, a solution that's beneficial to, to every grower out there. Tom, the numbers have to make sense, don't they? they you've got to put together some, uh, some kind of a package here that, a, that an investor will want. Exactly right. I mean, I am a financial guy, but I see you know, all the opportunities in the green space. Ag is trying to be better in the environment. And I'm really anxious to learn more about Yardstick. It seems like a really interesting fit. Lisa, on your farm there, up in the northern part of Iowa, not far from the Minnesota border, you have to look at it with the critical eye of, will this work for us? Yes, and how does it impact us, and how does it change our practices on the farm? So I'm looking forward to our conversation today. Well, Karsten, I know you, uh, you like to start off the questioning here because you really have uh, some things in mind. Uh, so we'll uh, pass the baton to you and let you zero in here with Chris on some things. Sounds good. Well, Chris, it seems like there's an explosion of folks wanting to build carbon programs in ag these days. And, and it sounds like we should be thinking of Yardstick as the partner that helps audit what, what actually happened and, and give us that reading, that, that checkup each year on just how much carbon we are sequestering. Exactly, yeah. And so right now in soil carbon, there's kind of three different ways to measure it. There's what are called proximal technologies conventional soil sampling, something like your stick, which means you're sticking a thing in the ground, you're touching the soil. Modeling, which is basically if-then statements, you know, if you, you know, uh, transition to conservation tillage, how might soil carbon change? And then there's remote sensing, what can we do with, with satellites? Yardstick is very unapologetically saying, we can't rely on models alone, we can't rely on remote alone. If we want real economic upside to growers and real climate legitimacy, we have to be touching the soil. And that means we need to reduce our reliance on conventional sampling in labs. That's our short game, is just replace labs. We're a better mousetrap to do the same thing that labs would do, we just do it way cheaper. So do you see yourself continuing to say as a service company, or at some point would you sell that product to a retailer, to that agronomist that is servicing my acre on, on the farm? Yeah, right now it's very important for us to be a service business because our mission is squarely uh, creating the economic upside for farmers to address climate change. That's the only thing we care about. We're not a soil insights company. We're focused on uh, the fact that agricultural soils can be a climate mitigation technology and folks deserve to be compensated for that. I can imagine a world in which we reach a saturation point of our ability to directly serve land in America, in which case, by all means, there's an amazing ag retailer scene that has existing relationships. Like, why would we go fight, you know, to have those relationships ourselves? But I see that on the medium term. I think it's unlikely that we'd pursue that, in the US at least, for the next few years. Speaking of geography, where are you targeting first? So we follow soil carbon project development. 
right? We're a service provider to existing soil carbon pr programs. We don't spin them up ourselves. We often joke that like, we don't actually know a lot about farming per se, like we just measure soil carbon. So we follow the folks that want to pay for soil carbon to be measured better. Right now that's overwhelmingly broad acre commodity cropping context in the US, mostly in the Midwest. You see it moving down the Mississippi, you see it moving a little bit down into the Southeast. I'd say a second priority for us after corn and soy in the Midwest are grazing lands. Uh, there are a lot of them, <laughs> uh, obviously, and there's many very compelling alternative ranching practices that similarly could address the massive climate footprint of our, our grazing industry. Um, so those are really two, our, our two clear priorities right now. Corn and soy in the Midwest, grazing, and then sort of experimentally everything else. Is there a standard, this is a finance guy asking this, is there a standard amount of times you have to probe a given acre of soil to sort of make sure you have the right profile? Is it 10 spots, 20 spots? Yeah. Uh, no is the short answer, okay. um, and that's part of the challenge. Okay. And that's also why designing a sample plan is explicitly part of Yardstick's offering. Okay. Okay. So when a project developer engages us, they're not telling us, and here's the 10 points, go here. They're telling us, here's a boundary. Oh, Yardstick, with your you know, PhD in geospatial stats and your PhD in soil science, like you tell me where the, the points should go. Um, so designing a sample plan is part of the customer experience that we provide. And again, these projects are being designed to be aligned to existing third-party protocols published by Climate Action Reserve or VERA that say, this document defines a high-quality soil carbon project. Many of those standards provide guidance around how to design sample plans, but it's pretty loose. Okay. So generally, no, that's our responsibility. Uh, we, de we defend our statistical methods, you know, right, right. You, you can look at them if, if you have those capabilities yourself, but the whole reason Yardstick exists is so that our customers don't have to build those capabilities in-house. So your, your product is clearly hardware, but is there a software side of this too also where that allows you to gather the data and analyze it, et cetera? So is it a, a whole package? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, I think I would say uh, our, our product is the experience of having soil carbon measured, really. Okay. And the way we make that possible is we have novel hardware in field. Right. We have an amazing team and software that tells you where to put it. And then we have a web platform that shows you that data in the right context, in a way that's shareable, because soil carbon right now is this crazy multi-stakeholder environment where a project developer needs to be communicating yardstick information to a farmer, to a purchaser of the eventual offsets, usually a large corporation, to a methodology maker or a registry like CAR or Vera, to a verification, you know, an independent verification body who's gonna say, I'm gonna come check on 10% you know, of those sites. So because the whole point is that we all need to be looking at the same truth data of here's how stocks changed, the software offering of what we're doing is, is absolutely essential. Um, Organic Valley uh, is, I can actually tell you, one of our, our partners, Organic Valley buys a lot of milk, has a massive climate footprint, has net zero goals. They need to be using soil carbon removals as part of their portfolio of climate mitigation strategies to hit their net zero goals. They get to do that from their own supply chain though, which is quite cool. What's really exciting to us about these so-called insetting models like Organic Valley is the milk and the carbon are both going to Organic Valley. So it, it's a more direct decarbonization of their supply chain. I'd love to take this back to the farmer level and to those that are listening to say, okay, how does this impact me? And how can I use your product or the results of your product to impact my bottom line as a farmer? So I think uh, the, the answer is on two time scales, which is, uh, how do you get paid and how do you keep getting paid you know, in the, in the medium and long term? Uh, I'll talk about the second one first, which is you keep getting paid for whatever you grow today by continuing to have productive soils. So if you care about long-term productivities of your soils, if you care about your kids being able to farm it the same way you do or somebody else's kids, investing in soil organic matter, soil organic carbon today um, is, is a worthwhile investment. Um, if you care about getting paid today, then you need to quantify soil carbon removals, and that's why Yardstick exists. Project developers can only do that if they can measure the changes in soil carbon. So they can't measure those stock changes affordably, which means right now soil carbon from an absolute dollar perspective is in its infancy. Contrast all the news about soil carbon programs with the absolute dollars that have actually gone to, far gone to farmers. It's a profound contrast. Of course, like hype always you know, precedes real volume, so I don't think that's inherently a problem, but what Yardstick exists to do is to ensure that the potential 
actually get realized, gets realized. You just said you were a marketing guy and, and you've touched a lot of startup businesses. So it's really interesting to me as a potential investor, talking to somebody who's done a lot of different things. What's the biggest, I mean, you're passionate about the climate. Everybody has to be more passionate about the climate, but what's really hooked you on Yardstick? What's, what really has you excited about this? Uh, so there's an amazing graph that I saw when I was thinking about what I wanted to do for my next company. And the graph has the x-axis is gigatons per year removal potential of a variety of ways of removing atmospheric greenhouse gases. How much can all these different techniques do? The y-axis is cost. What we want is the bottom right. We want lots and lots of tons and we want them as cheap as possible. The bottom right hand corner is a giant box labeled soil carbon. So soil scientists are in universal agreement that theoretically soil carbon could do three to eight gigatons per year. That's a big range, but you know, by now there's probably 15, 20 pieces of good literature over 20 years where yeah, I think, I think nobody, nobody would say that that's absurd. That's theoretical potential. The reason why I started Yardstick alongside Christine, Kevin, and now our, our amazing team is because measurement is a central bottleneck of that box being real. How do we go from the theoretical potential of 900 million acres you know, in active land use in America having climate impact and economic upside to farmers and ranchers to it being real? You gotta measure it better. So I think the thing that keeps me and, and I believe our, our whole team uh, excited is we wanna be the picks and shovels to the soil carbon gold rush. And not just gold because it's a lot of money, but it's, it's the best kind of money because we're preserving soils for our kids and our kids' kids. And therefore, we're preserving the earth for our kids and our kids' kids. And we're reducing harm to folks that experience climate change today. Uh, but if you can't measure it, you know, how do you manage it? Right. And that's where soil carbon is today. Chris, thank you very much for your explanations here. And we wish you well with the art stick. Thank you. And panelists, thank you for weighing in with some great questions. I want to remind our audience that we would love to know what you think of Yardstick. Go to pivotbio.com slash vote to weigh in. Pivotbio.com slash vote. There you can also enter to win a VIP pass to the Farm Progress Show in Boone, Iowa. You can also view other episodes of the show. And finally, come visit us at the Farm Next Innovation Tent at the Farm Progress Show. That show is August 30th through September 1st at Boone, Iowa. That's all the time we have today. Please join us next time on Farm Next, the show that gives you a front row seat into what's next in the world of agriculture. Farm Next has been brought to you by Pivot Bio. Pivot Bio, the nitrogen that stays put, whether or not. Farm Next is produced by 22 Creative Group in association with REL Productions and has been a presentation of Farm Progress Broadcast. If you'd like more information about Farm Next, please visit pivotbio.com slash farmnext.